Let us to bestow the precious Dharma teaching. Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus, homage to the venerable Mang Liao Ming, homage to Master Sakya Zheng Kong, and homage to His Holiness the Sixteen Kamapa, and homage to Master Dukdan Torji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar and homage to the main deity of Homa today, Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva. Good afternoon, everyone. How do you do? Sorry for the interruption. I still. Okay. 下礼拜天是四月十日下午三点 Next Sunday, April 10th at 3 p.m. There would be Jundi Buddha Mother Homa Fire Offering Ceremony. 昨天晚上我们讲了 Last night, we have talked about Jundi Buddha Mother that uh, we can view her as a Yidam as well as a protector because her dharma power is boundless. And her heart mantra is Om Tzili Tzili Tzunti Soha. And this deity, I believe, in the Jain religion, she is also considered a primary deity in Jainism. Jainism. There is a religion called Jainism. So she has a tremendous uh, Dharma power and she can be a protector as well as a Yidam. She's very magnificent. In the past, Master Pu Fang, Yidam was a Chundi Buddha mother. Today we perform Siddhikarva Bodhisattva's Homa. And just now, when I was forming the mudra, or at the beginning, Siddhikarva Bodhisattva told me that he's in the realms of hell and I am in the human realm. So Siddhikarva Bodhisattva is my brother, a very close brother. When he descended, 
It's not me. So who's I'm not for anything. No rise for me, but for him. There are reasons. So his Vajra name is a compassionate Vau Vajra. So the Vajra who is compassionate toward the six realms. So perhaps he realized that the hells are very difficult to empty. And basically, the hells are never empty. But he generated the vow that he would not become a Buddha before the hells are empty. And now it's extremely difficult to have to empty the hells because nowadays more and more people in the human world who do not follow Buddhist teachings nor are the uh, morality morals so he was he's very sad and I felt it I felt how he felt I feel how he feels so that's what it was I don't know what happened. I'm not sure. And the mantra, this ha is his heart mantra. <coughs> the sit syllable. That's the mantra. Om ha 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 we samoe so ha. Ah, Dizan Pusa. Tangsu ta the girl. Jin Chao Jie. The city gave a Buddhist of Mount Juhua was called Jin Chao Jie. He went to Mount Jiuhua in Anhui province. Typically, Siddhigabha Bodhisattva's tankas or statues in front of him, there's an elderly holding a staff or a, a stick. And most people think that that's an earth god. But actually, he is the, um, the owner of Mount Jiuhua. So Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva went there and asked for a place to live from the landlord of Mount Jiuhua. So could you please uh, provide a donation? So the landlord asked Siddhigabha Bodhisattva, how much land do you need? And he replied, I have this kasaya rope on me, and as big as this piece of cloth. And the landlord said, so tiny, of course. So he took off his kasaya rope, and when I throw it out, and where the place covered by the rope, please give it to me. And the landlord said, such a small rope, you know the kasaya rope, so sure, no problem at all. So he tossed his kasaya rope and covered the whole mountain. <laughs> so the landlord had no other way that than giving the whole mountain. So that's why Mount Jiuhua is the spiritual center of Siddhikabha Bodhisattva. Uh, 
So that's why next to Siddhikabha Bodhisattva, there's this elderly who was the donor who gave mountain, Mount Jiuhua to Siddhikabha Bodhisattva. So that's uh, his experience at Mount Jiuhua. It was a very, uh, a very amazing. <laughs> So that uh, a Kasaya group can cover the whole mountain. It's very miraculous and magical. <laughs> so at the time, sitting up a Bodhisattva uh, just cover himself with the rope and to cover his eyes, then everything is mine. Hmm? Amitabha. I think I have told this jokes, but I can share it again. There is uh, a father and the, uh, the nun, a Catholic nun, were playing golf, and he missed, and he said, shit, <laughs> shit, I, I missed it, and then the second, time he tried and he missed again and he said shit it's crooked it missed. and then the nun said oh you should not uh, curse and he tried and still it missed the hole so shit i missed again so there's a lightning from the sky and stroke strike on the nun to death so this, the father or the priest raised his head to God in heaven and said, you know, it's me who cursed, why did you strike the man? And then there's this elderly son, voice from heaven that said, shit, I missed. <laughs> Things in the world can be so, can always be so accurate, you know, sometimes you miss. Doctor, the patient told the doctor, I am coughing. Oh, so severe. Why did you take so long to come see me? And the patient asked, Is it too late? And the doctor just said, It's not too late. It's, it's my time off. So the patient was late. Now we'll do the question and answer. From Malaysia, Lianhua Jingxin. Grandmaster, how are you? I am a Singaporean disciple. I pay homage to you. May I ask you a few questions? One. With respect to the three times are one, if a sadaka does not want to continue living in this life, can they bring their physical body to go back in time to their past lives and continue living there or to the future? 
在三季一组的前提下，就是过去、现在、未来。So three times are one, which means the past, the present, and the future. No. Begin, began, begun. 就是过去、现在、未来。That means the past, present, and future. 一个修行成就者，如果不想生活在现在 ，a siddha, which is someone with attainments who doesn't want to continue living in this life, can be doing their physical body to go back in time to their past lives and continue living there or to the future to live. That's the first question. Oh, this is a very <laughs> mystical question. As if he's a deity, a god, that he could、uh, go to the past or then the future. Just now, I was too. When I walk up to Siddhigaya Bodhisattva. 我走到地藏王菩萨面前，刚刚来，还没有进来。When I walk to the front of the temple, I didn't come back. No, I already came back here. Before I lit the Homa fire, and I walk to the front of Siddhartha Bodhisattva. 我突然间进入过去。I entered. I went to my to the past, to my past life. So I want to talk about this reason. 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 And I found that I was I am Siddhika Bodhisattva. And right there, I remembered、uh, the past. In one of my lives, I was in Japan. That is, this Japan. There was no Chinese revolution. Was there a Chinese revolution in Japan? That's called like a flying swallow. Flying swallow. I'm not sure. Oh, geese! A flying geese. Era. What is it? Of all the era in Japan, is there one that's called this? Yes. 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 Asuka. Asuka era. During the seventh century, I was living in that era. Hmm. Is there any person called?
It's okay. Please be seated. He once was my brother. He had to live in Japan as well as Tibet. He's my brother. Was there someone that's called? Okay, please be seated. Well, that was me. Shotoku Daishi, I believe. I have to double check. So a siddha, someone with spiritual attainment, if they do not want to continue living in this life, we can know our past lives. And we can also know about our future. However, to move the physical body to the past or future, you have to practice your destiny. The body. So that's why we have a saying about the dual uh, practices of both nature and the body. So Grandmaster has attained uh, the practice of the nature. Let's just uh, term it a soul, which is easier rather than talk using life chi or primordial spirit. We just say our soul. Our soul can be turned to the past lives by practicing the nature, our nature. But if you do not practice your body, your body cannot go back to the past lives. So if you practice both the, the nature or, or the soul and the body, then yes, you can move your body to the past or the future. However, you need to have attainments in both the practice of the soul and body. 
the nature and the body. And sometimes um, most of us can't even have attainments in the practice of the nature, the nature, which is the Buddha nature. Moreover, the practice of the body. So the Buddha nature can go back to the past very simply, instantly, very easy. Like in front of Siddhartha Bodhisattva, I can go back to the, my past, which is the Asuka period or era in Japan, and I became the Sotoku Daishi. Why there are so many Siddhartha Bodhisattvas in Japan? Japan highly revered Siddhartha Bodhisattva in the villages and everywhere, always in standing uh, posture, holding the, the, the staff, the authoritative staff. It's everywhere in remote places too. They highly respect Siddhartha Bodhisattva. And I was in Tibet too. I once lived in Tibet too. In my past lives. This is all talking about the past lives. So Master Lian Tzu from New York were, were together with me before. And he once was living in Tibet too, and also in Japan. So so I can provide a consultation using a round table. When I put the spirit into it, uh, then the table can turn by itself. So Master Lian Tzu from New York can also do it. I'm not sure about other people, though. So to make a Siddha can make his soul to go to the past or the future lives. The soul, but for the body to go to the past and future lives, you need to have attainments in the practice of the body. I think in the past I have read the book who wrote, there were two spiritual cultivators or sadhakas who uh, have the souls out of body travel. So the souls left their bodies to when to go to Luoyang to uh, to enjoy the flowers. And one just took a look, uh, just enjoy and came back. And the other one took a, a flower blossom with him. And they came back. So the one that uh, could uh, bring the flower had attainments in both the practice of the soul and the body. That's why he could pick a flower and bring the flower back. But if you only practice the nature or the soul, then you cannot bring the flower back with you. That's the answer to the Hua Jingxin from Malaysia. Second question about Jatismara or the recollections of past lives or predestinations as spoken by the Buddha or the karma of the past, present, and future lives. Grandmaster wrote in your book number 284, the life lessons of a monk in his 70s in an article entitled Major Goodness and Formal Spiritual Cultivation, that one must do both. 
Yet it is mentioned that a Buddha can know all lives. Do you mean that a Buddha can accurately know all things, big and small, including the results after the karma has been established? So, if so, does it suggest that the Buddha would know all the results of karma? Wouldn't this be contradictory to establishing karma, as stated by the Buddha? So, what is this predestination and what is establishing your karma? When Sakyamuni Buddha was alive, he was against uh, predestination because he believed that a human being can able to change their own destiny. So the believers of the predestination or fatalism, they believe that everything is predestined. Then they don't need to put any effort, do not have to practice Buddha Dharma because everything is predestined, right? No need to cultivate spiritually. Everything is destiny. Just follow it. And you go wherever. But the Buddha was against that. And that's the Jatismara, or the collections of past lives, or destiny, as spoken by the Buddha. And this question, too, is very divine. So, so the Buddha knows all lives and accurately know all things, big and small, including the results of all karma. After the karma has been established, is it contradictory? No, it's not. But it is, too. It's really difficult to say. Because I personally feel that the one that learned feng shui would know if it is at the right magnetic field, then you would be very uh, diligent. You would be very energetic. But if it's the wrong magnetic field, if you are in the wrong magnetic field, then it's impossible to put in any effort or to exert that uh, it doesn't matter how hard you try. Like when you sit it on a Dharma throne, that is, you're always drowsy and falling asleep, even when you try to stay awake, that you cannot. That's the wrong magnetic field for you. If it's the right one, it's very easy for you to uh, to merge into it, to go into it. So it's related to the geomancy. So in Feng Shui, there's a saying that uh, the good land is occupied by the good uh, person or virtuous person, a blessed person. So if it's time, if you have the blessings, then wherever you live, any house, then uh, you would uh, succeed and become wealthy. So, but if uh, you're in bad luck, doesn't matter how good the consultation, the feng shui and geomancy consultation, that the house should be beneficial for you, but as soon as you live in it, the result is earthquake. And then took away all your earth energy from that spot. So it's part karma or destiny. However, the Buddha does not emphasize destiny because the past life has passed and the present is passing and the future is not here yet. So in Zen Buddhism, there's this famous phrase, here and now. So just treasure the here and now. Actually, the here and now, this moment, 
also become the past. That's why the Vajrasutra is talking about the concept of emptiness. That the mind of the past is unattainable, the mind of the present is unattainable, and the mind of the future is also unattainable. How can there be the here and now? You have no other choice than to be in the present, in the moment. So, in the moment that you have to go to the bathroom, because you have to pee. Right? You just have to go. So think about it. So the, the presence, the here and now is also important. So Jatismara, which is everything is predestined, and then establishing your destiny, that's the here and now. If you are very, if you do your best in the here and now, then you would have attainment. If you treasure each of the moment, then you would uh, have attainment. But if you grasp the predestination, then everything is, uh, is gone. Then you miss the opportunity. So of course the Buddha, the Buddha is now the past, present, and future. However, they are still in the here and now, and you need to apply both. So that's what I imagine. I reply to the Hua Jinxin from Malaysia. The third question, Grand Master, in ancient times. There was a prosecution by slow death, a gradual dismembering of one's body. The execution, the execution would take a sharp knife and slowly cut off the flesh and skin of a convict hundreds and thousands of times. In such extreme suffering, is it possible to be fearless and maintain meditative stability? If so, how does one do it? Only Sakyamuni Buddha could do it in the Vajrasutra. This slow death prosecution. Sakyamuni Buddha said, when he was the sage of endurance, he uh, was teaching the four queens or concubines of the king Kalinga. And the king saw it. So he prosecuted uh, him, dismembered him piece by piece, like the fingers one joint at a time. And yet he had no complaints. It was so painful and so much suffering. And yet he had done no any So what kind of spirit is that? That's the spirit of no self, as spoken in the Vajra Sutra. Only those who the spirit of no self can do it. If you still have self, it's impossible to do it. He was trying to deliver those four queens. But the king, Kalinga, did not think so, did not believe so. So he dismembered him. Like what you wrote here. And the question, this kind of extreme fear and suffering, is it possible to maintain meditative stability? I believe 
Most people cannot do it. Even I cannot. When it's painful, you would be crying. You can feel it. And at that time, you are talking that uh, no self, no self. That's just, that's just words. You're cutting your flesh piece by piece. How can be? How can there be no pain, no suffering, no, no hatred, no resentment at all in your heart? But Jesus could do it too. When he was crucified on the cross, he said, God, please forgive them because they know not what they have done. Jesus said that to God, God, please forgive those people who crucified me because they know not what they have done. They did not know that they have done wrong. So when Jesus was crucified, he also suffered greatly. So being crucified and this slow death, what's the difference between the two? Like nails right here and here and on, on your wrist and then another nail on your feet and to let you bleed until until all dried up before you die. Think about it. Yet uh, Jesus forgive the people who crucified him. And Sakyamuni Buddha was remembered piece by piece. So your question is, how does one do it? Sakyamuni Buddha did, Jesus did. Only the major, great, great spiritual cultivators can do it. Most people, including myself, wouldn't be able to do it. However, you need to want to do it, to do it, to believe in it. In Christianity, many people believe in that, uh, including Paul and John the Baptist. Also die. Uh, you know, they were caught and they were instructed to uh, abandon their faith and belief and to change, and they, they de rejected, so they were being prosecuted. So I went to the, uh, what's that called? Oh. The, the matador, I guess, uh, what's that called? Yeah, the matador. In, in Rome, the Colosseum, the Colosseum, those are the, when I visited there, the, uh, the Colosseum in Rome, so when I visited there, there's so many spirits of the people or, or the animals that died in the fights there that asked me to deliver them. But those uh, were fast, were done fast. So such spirits is already like martyrdom, I believe. That's already amazing. Moreover, the dismemberment, the dismemberment of the body. 
读圣殿的，出不了书，你不要去信，不然我把你砍。If someone tells you, "Don't believe in Tubida School, otherwise I would, uh, I would uh, cut you off." Then, please uh, don't maintain that. You just, you just agree. No need, no need, no need to suffer for that because it's too scary. Then you should just admit. Although, but you don't do it with all your heart, okay? <laughs> It's like the, the, the bullfight. In Rome. So because you want to live on, right? And you can just uh, uh, repent, <laughs> and you can swear, but at the same time, your feet is saying not. You know. And that that would do. Ah, we today talk about the Gospel of John, but we have two minutes left. What? It's five o two already. It's almost time. Let's talk about the Virgin Sutra, Chapter Twenty Five. Only fasting or illusions. Subhuti, what do you think? One should not say that the Katakata holds the notion. I'm delivering sentient beings. Subhuti, do not hold such a view. Why? Because sentient beings do not exist in the eyes of the Katakata. If they were to exist, then the Katakata would still have a notion of self out of sentient beings and lifespan. Subhuti, the Katakata states the self has no self. Yet mundane people believe that they have. Subhuti, the Tathagata says that mundane beings are not mundane beings; they are merely mundane beings. Subhuti, do you know? You know. 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 Actually, no such thought. So, Subhuti, do not hold such a view. Why? Because there are no sentient beings that I delivered. If there were sentient beings that I delivered, then the Tathagata would still have a notion of self, others, and others, and husband. Subhuti, the Tathagata states, The self has no self. Yet, mundane people believe that they have self. Subhuti, the Tathagata says that mundane beings are not mundane beings. They are merely named mundane beings. So, mundane, most ordinary people. So, what is the key point here? Sentient beings have Buddha nature. The Buddha taught the Buddha Dharma. You listen to the Buddha Dharma, and you understand the Buddha Dharma, and you apply the Buddha Dharma to deliver yourself. The Buddha does not deliver you. You purify yourself. And your Buddha nature appears. And Buddha nature has, has been inherently there or around inside you. So nobody can deliver you. You can only deliver yourself. You can only liberate and deliver yourself. The Tathagata, the Buddha, cannot deliver you because the Buddha nature is your own, your own thing. Why do I need you to deliver me? You are just teaching me the ways, the methods, and I purify myself. So I deliver myself. After I deliver myself, my Buddha nature appears. So I, I attain Buddhahood by myself. So it's not delivered by the Buddha. That's what the Buddha says. I am not delivering sentient beings. The sentient beings are delivering themselves. 
I'm just telling you how to purify yourself. And then you do so accordingly. And then you deliver yourself and you will attain Buddhahood on your own. That's the, the essential meaning of this. So the Buddha cannot think, I am delivering sentient beings. No, sentient beings are not yours to deliver that each and every sentient being delivers th themselves. Now, do you understand? Nobody can deliver you. Only you deliver yourself. Because the Buddha nature is inside you. Once you purify yourself, then you are a siddha, you are one with attainment. If you're not purified yourself, if you're not purified, how can the Buddha deliver you? Therefore, the Buddha does not think that he is delivering sentient beings. So that means there's no speakers, no listeners. So at the end, the Buddha says, what I mean is that you use the Buddha Dharma to purify yourself. The Buddha Dharma is just a means, a tool, uh, like a screw. And then you, uh, you nut and bolt to tie you up. So, if you lose, then you can be tightened up. So, by exertion, then you deliver yourself and have a tendency. So that's why the Buddha doesn't say you take refuge in whom. So like, of course, when we're living in this world, we take refuge in Grandmaster Lu, in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Actually, you take refuge in your own self nature. You take refuge in your own Buddha nature. That's called the self-refuge. You deliver yourself. Because there is not even a single sentient being that's being delivered by the Tathagata. Why? Because you deliver yourself. So, is there any Buddha nature that's delivered by Tathagata? Because there are no sentient beings that are delivered by the Tathagata. If they were to exist, then the Tathagata would still have the ocean, the notion of self. So when the Tathagata gives Dharma teaching, that's the Dharma teaching without cause. If the Dharma teaching is conditional, then there's self. So you're happy because you have delivered sentient beings, but no, they deliver themselves. So no phenomena of self, other sentient beings, and lifespan. There are none of those. Who have you, whom have you delivered? None. So the Buddha said, so the ones with self have no self. So the self has no self. Even I am not I. Yet mundane people believe they have a self. Then if they believe that, so they become selfish. Whenever you think of yourself, then you start to have self-interest. But Buddhists cannot have self-interest because, and you cannot have this notion of self. But mundane beings, 
but if they have a soul. That's why Subhidita Tagata says that money beings are not money beings. Because in the eyes of the Buddha, they only see the Buddha nature. So money beings are Buddhas. Therefore, money beings are not money beings. Because in the eyes of the Buddha, they are Buddha nature, they are no money beings. That's why they are not money beings. And because mundane beings being believe they have self, that's why they call mundane beings. That's why they are also call mundane beings. Because most ordinary people, they think they are self. They are the self. And because they have this notion, they become selfish. That's why you, you cannot have self. Like the Buddha said, you have to hold the notion of no self. Yeah. Every moment you should remind yourself, no self, no self, no self. We're just telling you not to have self-interest or not to be selfish. From the very beginning, you always uh, be very selfish. This is mine or yours or theirs. I want the best one. And you you take the, the bad ones. That's selfish, right? If everyone is equal, that's it. That would be right. That's the nature of equality. Therefore, Buddha nature is the nature of equality. It's this principle. Now, do you understand that chapter? Uh, three people went on vacation in New York City and stayed at the uh, penthouse on 45th floor. But one, one night, uh, the elevators broke, so they, they were asked to stay the night in the lobby, but they didn't want to. So they discussed and agreed to, uh, to climb up the stairs and sharing, sharing jokes all the way and finally they got to the 44th floor and really exhausted. And then let's, now it's the last joke, okay? So can you share your last joke and then he said, very short, but it's very sad. I forgot the keys to the room in the lobby. I think I've told this joke before. Uh, my school cards is very uh, stable, always first in class. And the other day, I became number two, and Dad told me, so you have digressed. And I said, no, I have not. I have progress. Uh, because I let, I let the, the second, the X uh, number two to be number one, and because it it was a win-win situation, and Dad was puzzled. What do you mean? Because when I got number one, you just give me one hundred, and when he got to be number one, he got one thousand from his dad, and he. I made a deal with me to share 500. Ah, this past few years, everyone is practicing meditation because at home, when you stay at home, it's like a retreat. Uh, don't go around, keep the health, and you would have more years to come. By protecting yourself, the family would be rest assured. 
in pandemic, no coming and no going, and nothing is the matter. This is Taiwanese. No coming, no going, and nothing is the matter. But play of words, it will not be affected, infected. So, just be at ease and practice meditation during the pandemic. So, I acted in a movie today, the past, the present, and the future. All continues and become one. Uh, what happened? What's happening? I cried my heart out. I felt so good. <laughs> There's benefit to cry. You can check if your tear ducts are still normal, open. If, it, if they're not blocked, they're good. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, as you age, there are many problems appearing. And if your tear ducts are blocked, that would be troublesome, right? How many Benny Home? <laughs> 